everyone. Welcome back to my math teaching today. Um, today is Monday, so let's get right into work. Um, today, you will learn the new lesson, which is iteration by parts. What do I mean, iteration by parts? Now, let's recall a little bit of the lesson you have learned with me last week. And last week, we were talking about the iteration by substitution. And you know that if derivative of the composite function, um, taking derivative of composite function, you use a chain rule. So iteration in iteration, which is anti-derivative, we use the substitution rule. They pair together like that. So in this lesson today, the derivative of the product rule, when you take the iteration, which is anti-derivative of the product rule, we use the iteration by parts. So let's recall a little bit about the product rule in derivative. And that is the lesson in the first course uh, calculus. And the lesson in the first calculus for the product rule, um, when we take derivative, we follow the product rule. And what the product mean? It means two function multiply together. Now, in math, product mean multiply. So let's say if you have a two function f of x time with g of x. And you remember in our first course of derivative, when you're taking the derivative of this, you keep the first one, f of x, time with the derivative of the second one. Adding with now alternate, you will keep the second one, g of x, time with derivative of the first one, f of x. So, I just review for you the product rule in derivative. So now we're talking about the iteration. So instead of the derivative, today we'll do empty derivative, which is empty derivative of this big chunk here. So let me copy them down. So when we do empty derivative of this chunk here, um, what do we get? Our purpose is to get back to the original function. So we reconstruct back to the original function, which is f of x times with g of x. So that is our purpose today. This is what we do today. Now, I can separate them, and that's why I call the iteration by pass. So let me rewrite them in the way of separation. So I'm going to write it in, in separation. So I'm going to say g cry of x. So this equal, right, d of x, ending with derivative of g of x time with a prior of x d of x and that equal this product function f of x times with g of x so in anti derivative i can separate and write them like that now in equation i also can rewrite them i can bring this to the right or I can bring this to the left, right? When we have a balance side. Once we bring them from the original, we just have to twist the operation, adding become positive, multiply become divide. So now what I'm going to do, I'm going to keep this one. So I'm going to write like this, f of x times with g prime of x, dx. So I'm going to keep that will be equal the right hand side function f of x time with g of x 
Now I'm going to bring this root to the right hand side. So positive become negative when I write like this. So after I rearrange like that, I still feel it very confusing because all of that f of x g drive acts too much, right? So I'm going to say, I'm going to say let u equal the function f of x. And let v equal the function of g of x. So I make them a little bit cleaner, you know. So now I'm going to follow exactly like this and we'll write the new expression for this root. So this is actually is the derivative of u and g graph of x is a corner derivative of v. So u times dv um, equal f x times g of x. This root is the one we want to get back, right? And that we call it uv minus this g of x is v. And f graph of x is just the derivative of u, and I call this c the u. Now this become a clean cut formula for integration by parts. So we call this formula is integration by parts. Okay. So now let me give you an example. Let's say if I have the first question and let's say if we have to integrate the function x pi with cos of 3x dx. And if I follow this formula, I know this I call it u and this I call it dv. Okay? And I follow the function, I say let u equal x. Then I find du derivative u equal 1 dx. Now, I want to say let dv equal cos of 3x. So then I take antiderivative dv, which is v, will be equal minus one third sine of 3x. So now follow this formula, I say, so if I want to do the integration of this root, it will be equal uv minus v du. So now I just plug in the formula so this integration will be from u, which is x, time with v, v is this root. So now I bring the number in front, I put minus one third, and here I put side x. So this is the u side three x actually, uv, minus the integration of v, and now v is minus one third, du, du is 1 dx minus 1 third, so this v minus 1 third psi of 3x and du is 1 dx, so just like that. So now I'm going to do the integration of this function. So that will be equal minus 1 third x psi of 3x now, negative times negative is positive. The derivative, antiderivative of this function will be 1 over 9 because we have to time with another fraction, 1 over 3. And side 3x becomes cos 3x. And let's see. So that's our answer for the example of number 1 I show you. So now I'm going to go to the next question. So what is our next question? Let's say if you have to do anti uh, integration of x squared time with e x dx. Now I'm going to call this a u and I'm going to call this a dv. So let me put in the side word here. Let's u equal x squared. So du will be equal 
2x dx, right? That's how we do the anterior, uh, how we do the derivative. Now, our dv will be equal e to the x. So take antiderivative dv, which is become v function, antiderivative e to the x is just e to the x. So now we follow the formula. If this is u dv, it will be equal u times v. And what is our u? Our u is x squared. And time v, our v is e to the x. Minus the antiderivative v du. Our v is e to the x. And our du is 2x dx. So time with 2x dx. So again, you have another product function for this. So in order to do this, we have to use the formula twice. We have to use it again. We say let u equal to x and let dv equal that. So I'm going to put the side word here. Let u equal 2x. So du will be equal to dx and let dv equal ex then v will be equal e to the x so now our answer will be copy this down x square e to the x minus uv our formula is uv so our u here is 2x and our v here is e to the x Minus. Now we have to do this. And now V here is e to the x. And du, our du is 2 dx. So now we have to do one more time. That will be equal to x squared e to the x minus 2x e to the x minus. Now we do derivative antiderivative this will be 2 e to the x. Um, yeah, the C. So now this is our answer. If we want to simplify further, because we found that it's very messy, we can take out the, for the common denominator of e to the x. Right, e to the x, e to the x, e to the x. So I'm going to take out the common denominator e to the x and open the bracket. I have x squared minus 2x um, minus 2 and plus c. So this is look. Um, Greener, and that's our final answer for the second question I show you. Wow, that's a lot of wood, right? <laughs> I hope you enjoy it. Okay, so now I'm going to go to the next example. So let me erase the board here. Now, I already remember this formula, right? So I'm going to erase everything so we can use the board for more. Example. Now, the more example I give you, the better you will do, right? Um, and that's why I said online course is very profitable. Um, So let me rewrite the, the formula, okay? So our formula will say if we do integrate u dv will be equal uv minus integration of v du. Okay, so our next example will be number three. 
Let's say if you have to integrate t secant square t dt. So again, I'm going to say let u equal t. I'm going to say let dv equal secant square t. So now I'm going to say let u equal t. So therefore, du will be equal um, 1 dt, right? So let dv equal secant square t, then v will be equal um, the, the antiderivative sequence square is 10. So 10t, uh, yeah, 10t plus c, right? Okay, so now let's apply the formula. So therefore, our answer will be u times v, and our u is t, our v is 10t minus integration of v, and our v is 10t again, du, our du is 1 dt, so we just say dt. So our answer will be t, 10t minus the antiderivative of 10 is, um, antiderivative of 10 is long, secant t plus c. So that is our answer for the example three. Okay. Um, now I'm going to give you another example, right? Another example is if you have to take the derivative of trigonometry function, let's say 10 inverse of 10 minus x, dx. Now you might say that, oh, um, this one is maybe only have one function. So why do we bother to do integration by part? Okay, so let me erase the bar so that we can have room if we have to move. And bear with me for this. Sorry about this. But I try to do it as fast as I can, right? When I erase the bar. Um, okay, if I use a computer, I'm gonna be um, even more, like even slower. Okay, so now why do we use UV in here? Um, we only have one function. Okay. Um, because this function is the inverse function, so it's a little bit complicated. Okay. So I'm going to say let u equal 10 inverse of 10 minus x. So then derivative of du will be equal, if you remember this formula, right? Um, something like that. Except that we don't have an a, so we don't have to put a like that, and x divided by a like that. But it's exactly like that, right? So du will become one, back to this, right? So one plus x squared, yeah dx. Now, I will say let v, dv, sorry, dv equal 1, dx. Okay, then antiderivative of dv will become x, right, plus c. Okay, so now follow the formula again. You say, therefore, this will be called u times v, and our u is this function, 10 minus 1x 
time our v, our v function is just x. So I'm going to put the x in front. Okay. So uv minus the integration of v du and our v is x and our du is this function. And I'm going to join them like that. Okay, so now our task is still going on. We're not finished yet. And the reason because we have to use the substitution u in here for this expression, right? So I'm going to say for this one, we'll say let u equal um, this one. I'm going to say let u equal 1 plus x squared. So therefore, the u will be equal to x, dx. And if I divide by 2 for this side, I cancel that. So 1 half du equal x dx. So now, when I put it back, our answer will be, copy this down, x 10 minus 1 x, 10 minus 1 on top, inverse of 10 x minus. Now, if we use substitution rule, we can rewrite this as um, 1 over u. And actually, 1 half outside, right? 1 over u, du. We substitute like that. So back into substitution rule, we learned from last week. So now, what does this become? The answer is x inverse of 10 minus 1 half. Now, antiderivative 1 over u is long u. Long u plus c. But what is our long u? Our long u is back into, we're going to put u equal that, so we're going to say this is long. 1 plus x squared plus c. And this is our answer. So now you understand why we have to do u, u and v for just one function like that. Because this is a trigonometric function inverse, right? So it's complicated and we have to use this method. Okay, so I guess um, everybody clear with this. I'm going to give you another example. So let's say we have another example. Let's say you have to integrate x of e to the x over x plus 1 on of them square dx. Now this we can also use the u and v integration by pass as well. Except there is another way of doing it. Um, which is a lot easier. So let me show you that first, right? So if I do integration like that, I know my answer is just a to the x on the top. Down here, um, I have x plus 1. Now, you will say, oh, I am memorized. How do I know this equal this, right? Now, sometimes memorization in um, memorization traditional rules <laughs> in math so works, works well, right? Now, I can memorize this equal this easily if I see this pattern, but I have to prove it to you. Why is this correct, right? So now let me do it. Now, this is antiderivative equal this. So now, if we take derivative, it should go back like this, right? So let y equal this function, e to the x over x plus 1. I'm going to take derivative for you to see if I go back to this one or not, right? So remember the quotient rule in derivative. So now we work backward, we use derivative, okay? We're not talking about antiderivative anymore. We just want to check if this answer is correct or not. If this is correct, when we take derivative of this, we should go back to this, right? 
So the coaching rule say keep this one. Derivative of the top one. Minus keep this one now. Derivative of the bottom. And derivative of bottom is just one. Right? All of them will be equal to x plus one square. So that's the quotient rule when you take the derivative. Now let's simplify this expression. So I'm going to um, take common denominator for this. So I'm going to pull the e to the x down. And inside, I have to multiply back x plus 1. e to the x is this, minus e to the x. So it's just minus 1. And all of this will be x plus 1, all of this squared. Okay, now what this turn out to be? Um, so this turn out to be one minus one cancel out. So we, you left with x, the e to the x, all of them over x plus one squared. Okay. Now, let me check back to my answer. Is that true? We have x e to the x, all of them over x plus one squared. So this rule, yes, that ans this answer is correct. So in this example, you don't have to use u and v. But if you practice, if you say, let u equal the top here, and let your dv equal one over this. And you work through that. I don't want to bother to, to work uh, for you. I want you to try, okay? If you use u and v, all what you have to do is let me give you a hint. You will say let u equal the top, which is x to the e to the x. And then you take the u, right? and let your dv equal x plus 1 to the minus 2. You can bring this up. Let two function time together, and this is x plus 1 minus 2, so you have two function. This is f of x time with g of x down here. You can bring it up and change the power 2 become negative 2. And then you can try using the integration by part on your own see if you get exactly the answer like my frame here, the square here. So I let, I let you do that. Okay. Um, there are one more question. I just want to finish up with you today for this iteration by Park. And let me um, erase ball again. This is an interesting question I want to show you. Me. This last question I would like to show you is a little bit tricky, so that's why I want to show you the last question. Um, now, the more I show you, the better you see the pattern and you like it. You like it, right? And that's why I told you online education is the best education reform now in my bias. <laughs> but anyway, I want to show you the last question, right? Um, now, in this last question, you might question me, oh, we only have one product, I mean only one function. Why do we bother use u and v in here? And you will see, because we have a square root on the x on top, so it's kind of a little bit complicated. So I'm going to replay this. I'm going to say, let t equal square root of x. So therefore, I can rewrite this as x to the power one half as well, right? So I can write like that as well. 
So now I'm going to take derivative of dt over dx equal bring it down become one half and derivative we take away power one right minus one so actually when you take away this become minus one half so this should be minus one half um x to the minus one half on the top right so now i'm going to say therefore dt will be equal I'm going to rewrite this down here to make it become a positive power. So I have this. And I'm going to kick the dx up here. So I have like that. Now, because I want to separate the dt and dx, so I'm going to kick this root up here. And when I kick it root, it up here, I have minus 2 square root of x of dt time dt equal dx. Okay, so now we'll replace this function by t. So I have e and on top will be et. And this root equal dx. So replace the dx by this root. And I'm gonna change this become t. So I will have time to minus two Instead of square root x, I say that t equals square root x. So now I change this by t uh, minus 2t dt. Right? Minus 2t dt. And that's how I substitute for the x because the x equals this. So I substitute this. So now back into the product function. You can see that now, right? So I'm going to call this is. I'm calling this a u, and I'm going to call this a dv. So I'm going to say let u equal minus 2t. So therefore, the u will be equal minus 2, minus 2, uh, the u over dt. I'm going to put dt here, minus 2 dt. And I'm going to say let dv equal e to the t. So therefore, the V function is an antiderivative that is the same A to the T. So now I continue with the formula. And I have to, sorry, I have to erase this a little bit to continue with this. So let me. So you see this is a complicated function, even though it looks not complicated, but it turned out it complicated. That's why I want to show you. Okay, so now I'm going to follow the formula. We have integration by u dv, and our u is minus 2t. Our dv is a to the t. Now, all of this will be equal uv, our u is minus 2t, and our v is et. So uv minus in the rate of v du, and our v is et, and our du is minus 2dt. So now, we're going to integrate this, and that will be equal minus 2t e to the t minus 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 2 will be plus 2 e to the t plus c. Now, all we have, we have to do is substitute back. We have minus 2 times t, which is square root of x, times with e square root of x plus Two e t is square root of x plus c. Now at this point, I can factor out the two, the two here because they have the same common factor, and e to the square root of x, this one. So I'm going to say minus two 
a to the square root x is a common factor i pull it out inside i left with uh, two square root of x for this one plus plus become minus because minus times minus will be plus two a square root of x is just one right and plus c so then i'm done that is how you integrate the last complicated equation uh function sorry so i'm going to end our lesson today is a long lesson in the next um a couple of lesson it will be the same or even the longer because the the more we um, the further we go the more complicated in math it becomes and um, so this is the calculus level and i also want to uh, design my course in the way that if the student who enter the university they will see some part of my um, lesson in there so that they can you know like um, make a smooth transition from the high school to university. It, I think that this course only interest for those students who graduate from math 12 and college student and you know like students who taking the first university in the in the university. The speed of university is so fast, right? If you take five course load or four course load, even the four course for courses. Plus with this calculus, it will blow your mind up. I don't know, that's how I experienced, right? Um, it it depends on, you know, if you're good at math, you might feel, oh, this is a piece of cake. Now, I never say that, even though I'm a math teacher, I never say that this is a piece of cake. Um, I felt like anything require effort and require training and require up a lot of patience to look to learn as well as to do the work. So to me, I don't see anything like very easy in life. It's just that we have to uh, go through the process of life and we want to improve our knowledge and to learn for 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 better, I don't, I don't know. I think that um, uh, this is the subject I choose, and I found it's not easy um, to 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 most people, right? Maybe to some people are easy, but to most people are hard. And I know that when I teach in high school math in my public school and private school, um, most of my students didn't like math not until i try to you know like go through very slow step by step with them and make the project and make you know more interesting lesson plan and they start like engaging in my topic but it takes time for me to train them to do that and they went through with me and later on they told me that they love math but however they realized this is a lot of work and they uh, they get into it um, but the process is take for years. I, I, I saw my student growing after years. I, I've been tutoring them, teaching them, right? It's not like one day turnover. However, um, because I like teaching and so anytime like I went into the school and I taught this topic, um, most of my students start like, oh, I get it. I understand math now, you know? Um, so that is the positive side, right? Um, anyway, uh, I will end the video lesson here. And I think that um, the next lesson, I'm going to talk about the um, trigonometric integration. So you will learn with me um, on, the, on the details on the lesson in calculus, which I'm not one to leave it, left it outside even though I don't have to cover 100% curriculum. Usually, as a teacher, we teach this, we choose to teach it and, and not 
the other one like if it's sometimes it's so hard and more complicated but i developed the course online and i would like to cover everything for you um, to be able to uh, see it and familiar with it um, if you taking the calculus you have to most of major i know now because um regardless you want to be a physics or no you know like um um a, a, in your major is in science you need at least to take one university calculus course and 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 to be familiar with this topic my course has become so useful to you to your learning in the university and I warn you that if you're taking four or five course load, even though you don't have to take the calculus in the first year, you don't have to. But they expect you at least to have one calculus or one statistic course math, right? Because regardless you in an economist or you social, social worker, whoever you want to choose to be, uh, you still have to do a little bit about statistics. So maybe you don't have to take calculus, but you have to take statistic course, right? But if you go for science, nurses, uh, engineer, you for sure need to have at least one introduction to calculus course in the university. And you can take it in the third year, in the fourth year, whenever you want. However, uh, prepare for that. University workload will be a lot and um, they tend to go very quick for the calculus. Uh, course as well. They, they're not going to slow like this, like me, right? So you, if you learn my course, it benefits you a lot when you enter the university. I am advertising for my course, of course, but I tell you the truth. I didn't tell you lie, right? Um, I, 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 I tell you what I experienced based on my experience because I went through university already. So I now I transfer my experience to you. Now, my experience is very common, to be, to be honest with you. Most students will, will, um, will cope with that, the same like why I am, what I'm, I was coping in the university. Um, so learning my course, and back in my time when I was learning in university, I was um, very struggling because nobody showed me this online and private tutoring is was so expensive for me i couldn't you know afford to do that and and so i had to take a lot of my ties and relearn and re 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 -taught myself and 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 sometimes i have a little bit help from the ta but uh, you don't have time to wait for the ta all the times so you have four or five courses waiting for you so that's that just the uh, my experience now today I found you have a lot of privilege because um, we have a free education on YouTube like this and 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 also course online are not um, very expensive like tutoring one on one um, if you need help you need assistance uh, you still can afford uh, to buy online courses, right? Um, compare with the labor I devote in my 10 hours a day to devote the course online, it's nothing compared with my labor. Now, I know that even though I sell the course, maybe $10 to you, maybe a big deal, maybe a lot, but for me, that is the home, you know, like 10 hours each day I put on it. So I, I, I try to give free education on live YouTube, but I also um, want you to value the labor of the course creator we put in. So I could not, and I don't think it's fair for us and, it sh and we shouldn't. Um, anything we give it for fair and um, for free is become rented, like take it for rented, right? Uh, we don't value it. So I, 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 I wish that at the course creator, when you are willing to buy my course and when you're willing to learn from that, I want you to realize the value I put on it, into it, um, a lot of details, a lot of attention, 
and um, based on my own experience, my expertise about the subject area. So I want you to value my hard work and, and therefore I wouldn't give it uh, out free. I mean like in YouTube, you can learn it for free because that's how the system desired like that, right? Um, which is, yes, I understand that benefit from uh, some student. However, um, I still believe that anything we learn it for free, we take it for granted and we don't value it, right? And in my course, it's different that I put it in the lesson one by one and they're con well connected to each other. And the, the flow of it, it, you need to take the calculus university. I strongly advise you um, trying my course, right? Uh, it helps you a lot um, when you have to take the calculus um, in the university. And, and I believe on the majors, regardless any major, you need to have at least one introduction to calculus. And of course, in university concept is higher a little bit, higher, or maybe the same, or maybe lower, but I mean, like, you take with four or five courses at the same time, it becomes very tough, and you don't have time for all of that. So be prepared for it. And um, taking the course is, even though if you don't use it, I mean, it knowledge never is become garbage, right? Like, whatever you learn, store in your mind, and then at least you know that knowledge is valuable. So even though you don't use it, um, you never know, you might use it in the future. It's especially when you take course online, what do you do? And you throw it away, or it's your lifetime learning. You can have it in the future, you can read, learn yourself when you need it, and you can keep it and you can store it like your treasure and you can re rewire it and relearning it um, tape or whatever like you know like it's there for you so one purchase is one lifetime right so it's still so cheap <laughs> anyway <laughs> you can i know that some people i don't say all of you but i say some right we can even myself maybe like in the past I, we can buy a dress for $300 and we wear it only one time for going to the party or, you know, wedding, whatever. And we toss it away and uh, that's it. And, and we, we didn't see it how waste it is. But I know right now some of my friends bought a purse, brand new purse for $10,000 or $3,000, right? Uh, 300, you know, like um, or a, a pair of glass, you, you sunglasses sometimes cost you $600 or maybe $200, cheaper is $20. Now the cost you're taking calculus is $200, you know, $300. It's just nothing uh, compared with what you spend in your life. So we don't value education. We just think education is so cheap and we should, we should take it for granted or we shouldn't concern. And we'd rather to buy a, a dress or you know, go to the restaurant or go to travel, spend thousands of tickets. But when it comes to education, we're so cheap we don't even want to spend 10 bucks to, to, to have an online course. And, and, and how does that sound to you? Like, I don't know. I just feel that something wrong. But anyway, <laughs> that is what I'm thinking, right? Everybody has entitled to have a different opinion. So I just give you some food for thought and think about it. Anyway, uh, thanks for watching and Oh, sorry. <laughs>